G'day, this week we're going to be turning the 67 kilo old maps cabinet into a storage containment unit for my latest battery build. Take all your safety concerns, leave them in the comment section below. Okay, so I might have got a little bit carried away with actually getting all this apart before I showed you too much. But it was pretty hard with that door on. Now the door's been removed. It's almost 10 kilos just for the door alone. And you can see here we've got the aluminium parts here that actually hang the maps off of. And we've had to cut through these little bits here so we can actually get them off. And then drill out the bottom. It had some decent set of hinges along the bottom down there. So I've drilled them out up here, through here. We've got a couple of screw holes that go through the back. And this is double walled. So it's nice and thick. And from what I can tell, this metal here is about a millimetre, a millimetre and a half thick. So it's, it's quite heavy, coming in at 67 kilos, fully dressed. And as you can see, now that's not centred, that's just using some of the pre-made holes at the back here. So we're going to put some clips here, so we can actually hold the door on, as well as a little shelf down the bottom here. Now, because I took the hinges off and these were the primary mounts, I've had to rest the actual door on something. Um, I'm yet to know whether or not these hinges and these pop rivets that I use to attach them are going to be strong enough. But I've only done one of them for now because I'm sort of trying to lay it all out as I go. Another good little feature of this cabinet, they've got these feet. So they come out, so they stop the whole cabinet from coming forward. However, I don't think I'll be needing that as the weight will be pretty much centralised and pushing down. And I'll probably utilise these bolt holes to put them into my shipping container wall. So it holds it against the wall if I end up using this. If I don't end up using this cabinet in one of my builds, I will actually give it away with two mounts if I don't use it. So stay tuned for that as well if you want to pick that up from Brisbane, Australia. Now the recommended retail of this unit is 2000 bucks. I believe the person I got it off paid a lot more than that for it. It's, I think it's going to be reused well, otherwise this would have just gone to the scrap heap, which would have been, a, I reckon, a cry and shame. It's such a good little cabinet to use. So. Let's get these mounts installed. A few hours later and a broken GoPro, we have the batteries in. Now I've gone through and made all the looms up. So we've got the battery management looms. So we're using HRC fuses and we've just got a little bit of braided sleeve there and I've gone a little bit of effort to make them look good and be nice and safe. So we've got a loom, we've got three looms. We've got one loom for the top, one loom for the bottom and then one loom for the middle. The problem now is that I don't like the cable layout that I had chosen. So I've got uh, about 10 metres of what's that 35 millimetre fine strand welding cable. Now the plan was, well, the plan was this was 24 volt. It's now going to be 48 volt. So it was in that configuration. Um, but that means that I've got posit the negative terminal here. And ideally, I'd like to have the positive terminal down here, but of course, I've got another negative because I've put the, the, the negative on this side and the positive on this side for the entire battery. So I'm gonna have to grab this bottom battery, pull it all out. I'm gonna have to pull all the nickel strip off, which is, that's gonna hurt my soul. But I'm gonna have to turn the batteries around. I'm gonna have to reconfigure them. So I've got the positive on this side and the negative on this side. Then I'll be able to place a cable from here down to there and that'll make the battery layout and the cable management a lot neater. So let's get after a 12 hour time lapse and get that bottom battery reconfigured.
Well, that was 12 hours well spent. I am really loving the results. Wish I had done it this way in the first place. It would have saved myself 250 odd dollars a nickel strip, but I wanted the result and I got it. So let's run through it. Now these two, these actually weigh about nine kilos each. So there's an awful lot of weight coming back on here. And I've mounted that to the wall. We've got two M8 bolts on the outside. And then we've got 10 tech screws. We've got six along the bottom and four along the top that hold it all in place nice and securely. I'm not worried about it coming off the back wall at all. We've got some big washers and nuts on the M8 bolts. It's very secure there, so it's not, not gonna come off or vibrate off. What I am concerned with is these top mounts. Now, if you can see when I push it back a little bit, the top mount sort of moves just a little bit. And we're finding that some of them are actually starting to lift up a little bit. So they should be pushed down a little bit more, holding them in better. So to alleviate that problem, I had one idea of putting a seat belt around it, and that just looked ugly. And I ended up getting with some hook and loop fastener, which is basically Velcro, and making a little strap. So the little strap just is here, and that just loops around over the top there, over the top, holding that down nice and firmly wrapping around the bottom it's nice and neat it's an elegant solution and it'll add that extra layer of safety now i've also got the battery management leads i've changed them all around i had top middle and bottom before and i've just now gone to the top and the middle there it's it's a much neater solution however i've found some more problems with it every time i look at this i find some more problems and before i move much further i would certainly love your opinion on how to make this the most safe battery enclosure I can. So we've got all those held in, but we've got the battery management leads. And what I've noticed is here is I've just got a little lead coming down the bottom from here, and then it goes down between the batteries and then loops down to here. Now that's not a problem, except I didn't put a sheath over that wire down there, protecting it a little bit more from the sharp nickel here. So that's definitely a short circuit point. So I'm going to fix that up in a, in a future in a future video. Um, and I've got the, the top lead coming down through here. And it's all nice and neat. It's very well cable managed. Uh, I think I'm going to go with some sheathing like that over the, over the little red cable just to get rid of the red. I know it's pedantic, right? But we've got to do it. And we've got individual fuses. And then we're going to have the cables coming up here. So all the, the fly leads coming up here and now I don't know whether, so that's going to come into a Watchmon 5 with an expansion board. Now I don't know whether just to put that there and then run all the wires in there. I can just bolt it straight to the side of the wall or, or double sided tape it up there or something. I'm not sure how I'm going to do that. Um, I might be able to cut those mounts off the back there and flush mount it. I might be able to actually stick it to the side because I'm really, I'm not really liking the idea of putting a hole through the side at the moment. The other option was I had this small electrical box. I could throw that in there, which would make a nice clean install. I don't think I'd be able to get the clips on at the back, but you could certainly do the clips at the front, which would be more than enough. And I could hide all the electronics in there, which is another option. Let me know in the comment section below, which would be your preferred method of housing. Uh, now I'm going to have the Watchmon 5. Uh, I need some fuses for the Watchmon 5, so the power running to it. And I'm going to need a shunt trip in there as well. So I have some RGB here also. I'm going to do some cool things with the battery management system and the RGB lighting. And I'm going to have my state of charge based on the color of the LEDs. So stay tuned to see if I screw that one up. We'll also be installing a couple of 48 volt fans. So they'll be sitting down in the bottom there, nice and neat out of the way we should be able to cut a nice big hole there and then put a cover over that so it's nice and safe probably put a cover on the inside as well just to stop those fan blades from getting damaged we'll put one on either side and they'll be just controlled by the bait rim so if anything gets too warm in here the fans will kick on you can see there at the top there's decent amount of ventilation there it's not it's not a sealed uh, container or a unit even with the door on there there's a slight gap here as well so that'll pump some air through this and keep it nice and cool as well anyway tubers thank you very much for tuning in I'm sorry this is not got more detail in it if you if I'm missing anything that you'd like to see hit me up in the comment section below thank you very much for tuning in and I'll see you on the next one <laughs>